Hello, my people. It's your Negro with aptitude and host of the Blackboard, Mickey Lee. Welcome to another episode of Waste Not Wednesdays. Normally in this series, we explore the rapidly changing food resource landscape and how to be prepared for it by learning to grow, store, and acquire food. We also look at other valuable disaster preparation skills to have, like first aid and such. However, today I want to talk with you about a resource we all take for granted, but which can never be duplicated. It is so priceless that even the richest person in the world cannot buy more of it if they gave up their entire wealth. Even though it is precious, the poorest person on earth generally receives a lot of it at birth. What am I talking about? Time. Yes, Father Time. While the media, politicians, and other power mongers distract us from the upheavals occurring in Mother Nature, we are losing connection with Father Time. We must remember we are on a ball in space. In fact, scientists tell us we are only one of billions of galaxies. No person in their right mind can claim to have put any of these things in place. And if something does not come from nothing on Earth, it doesn't anywhere else. Furthermore, we all know that one day we will cease to walk this Earth. But the truth that many of us, the truth is that many of us reject that we won't cease to exist. We won't go quietly off into that good night. Our version of being a good person will not be a get out of jail free card. And there is no do over. When we leave this reality, when we cease to walk this earth, we will stand face to face with the God who created all, including us through his word. If we are not covered by the blood and pardon of Jesus Christ, then we will stand guilty for every thought, every word, every action or emotion contrary to the standard of holiness as dictated by God, the one true eternal God as revealed in the Bible. Guilt before the Lord equals destruction. Destruction is to be assigned to hell where you cannot leave and will exist forever in pain, torment, agony, and fear without even a single second of consolation. Now I must take a little brief sidebar here and suggest that you watch some of my earlier um, videos. I think one called uh, why would God sin save you or why would God, how we wind up in hell or something of this nature. I, I'll put a card at the end of this video. It will surprise you to learn that according to God's word, he doesn't send even a single person to hell and that he laments deeply over every person who chooses to go there. That's right. We are the ones who send ourselves to hell. Please consider these words strongly. Now back to the main point of this video, confronted with this truth and seeing how rapidly the world as we know it is dismantling should compel us to use our time differently. It should force us to reconsider our priorities and to take enough care for both ourselves and for one another to work towards our salvation as well as pursue activities that will leave us less vulnerable while our earthly walk continues. Belief on the Bible can be difficult for many. Some of you have started out your walks well, but you've backslidden or you've turned away because your experiences with so-called Christians left you church hurt or betrayed. And I can understand that. Believe me. Others of you who are like me and you've had a deep misunderstanding of God for many, many years, and this left you bitter angry and untrusting. I came back from that and I'm telling you that if you watch my videos, it should help you as well. 
Still, others come from religious backgrounds that are completely different from the Bible. While all of these scenarios and more seem quite understandable from the human point of view, let me assure you, none of them will be acceptable excuses in God's sight. So let's take a look at a few scriptures which have foretold the events that we are witnessing today. And in fact, before we get into those scriptures, I have to say that I attended a work conference in the spring of 2014. In that work conference there, which was um, public health professionals across the country, there was someone called a futurist there. There was a guest speaker called a futurist and he put on um, a number of presentations during the weekend that we were in Florida. And he uh, foretold, he anticipated there being a major public health crisis in the year 2020 along with famine and much an upheaval. Now, I questioned this man at length. I couldn't believe it. He said the year 2020, there would be famine and there would be a, a massive public health crisis. I didn't get any indication that this man was a religious man. I got every indication that he was completely secular. That means more than likely a non-believer having heard of the Bible possibly, but never really taking any time to study it and not um, digesting God's word. So this was just a person who in his professional capacity had the skill of looking at various trends and then being able to make predictions about those trends. Well, he was spot on with this year, 2020. Thank God I took his word to heart and I began to uh, store up food and I began to warn friends and family uh, back in 2015. Now, some people still do not really believe what it is that I've told them over time, but others have thanked me for waking them up and I'm hoping I will wake you up too. All right, let's look at a few scriptures which have foretold the events that we are witnessing today. Now, I know that some, if not most of you, may remain unconvinced, but indulge me, please. The book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 8, states, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. So as we well know, China and the United States have been in a tussle for quite a while. Uh, then there's North Korea versus the United States, Russia versus the United States, Iran's in the picture, Iraq's in the picture. There's a whole bunch of rumors of war going on. And then of course, there are um, rumors of an economic move movements that are e economic and financial wars going on as well. What we may not be paying enough attention to is the famine part. So if you've watched other videos on my channel, you know that I reported on the massive animal deaths that, you know, millions and millions of fish, uh, hundreds of thousands of various um, land animals, uh, into the millions, uh, just suddenly dropping dead uh, for no ex explainable reason. And then, of course, there is the culling of millions and millions of pigs, supposedly with the swine fever, one type of fever or another, uh, culling and cullings of millions of chickens because they have produced too many eggs. And that's just happening between China and the United States. That doesn't count other places where they are um, uh, allowing crops to die in the field and so forth and so on as they are doing in the United States as well. Between all of those things and the current pandemic that we're under, the supply chains have been disrupted. And in addition to that, there have been crop losses due to droughts, crop losses due to floods, crop losses due to grow zones, um, the seasons not being as long as farmers are normally used to them being. And this, support, this of course is part of the grand solar minimum, something else that I have reported on. 
So if you do a little research, you will find that these things are already happening. In Luke 21, verse 11, it states that there will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Well, we know that there have been great earthquakes in very uh, unusual places like the mid middle of the United States. You can do some research on that. Um, of course, there have been great earthquakes in places like India and the surrounding nations, the various Istans like Pakistan and U Uberkistan and things of this nature. There's also been a uh, great uh, concern over the continued earthquakes that are happening on the um, Pacific Rim and the worry that it will either cause one of the volcanoes to explode or that it could trigger a tsunami that will wipe out uh, the West Coast of the United States. So these things we've gotten used to adjusting our lives. If you live on the West Coast like I do um, around earthquakes and you figure that you will survive it. Um, in other places, we've gotten used to hurricanes and things of this nature. But if you do a little research on the um, weather uh, anomalies that have been happening over the last five years in particular, you will repeatedly see that these things are happening at much greater intensity, much more frequency, and doing far greater damage than they ever had before. In one of my videos, I had a chart that showed that. Um, but just do a little research on your own, you'll find out about it. Then there are issues uh, such as um, in, I believe it's the book of Mark, but don't quote me on it. The basic, con the basic text reads that the heavens will be shaken. And so there is a comet in the sky right now, neo-wise, that people are following. Um, it was an undetected comet. And so uh, that is one concern. Uh, there was an asteroid that passed uh, very close to the Earth uh, just a few weeks ago, and it too was undetected. And and until uh, two or three days later, that would that it was close, that it made a close enough approach to the Earth. If you do research on near Earth events, uh, near Earth asteroids, I think they call them, or near Earth events, uh, you will find that the the number of these near-earth events have increased. Again, we've gotten used to adjusting our lives to living on Earth, and we've got in, gotten used to surviving so many of these things that we no longer think of them as being in the control of God, but he is rapidly tearing away all of the veils between the seen and the unseen so that he can make it clear who's really in control. So I would urge you to uh, do some research. And again, check the description box because I always leave uh, valuable links there to help you start your research. Then, of course, we are dealing with the coronavirus. Now, the coronavirus um, is a pestilence. We, we may not think of it as a pestilence because we normally think of bugs, but of course it is a pestilence. And certainly this is something unlike what the world has never seen before. The numbers are debatable. I intend to do a video this week that will discuss my position on it, which is while there is a concern a health concern, there was not a health crisis. And it is my belief that all of this lockdown business and the constant shaming people into wearing face masks and all of the uh, vitriol concerning people who don't wear face masks in public, I'm not talking about in a crowd. I'm not talking about when you're going shopping, although these things are harbingers of something else as well. I'm talking about you're in wide open spaces with hardly anybody else around and you're walking your dog, you're playing in the park or whatever, and people want to shame you or put you in jail for not wearing a face mask. Even though there are plenty of doctors who say wearing a face mask all day 
is very d harmful to your health because you just repeatedly breathe in the bad air your body is supposed to be expelling. Not only that, if you are exerting yourself while you're walking around and you're wearing, for example, a black mask, then the black mass is attracting, attracting the heat from the sun so you get even hotter. And then no matter what color mask you're wearing, you're still going to work harder to breathe because you have covered up your nose and your mouth. But that's for another video. So whether or not the numbers can be believed, the fact of the matter is we are in a worldwide situation and in which not only are people being... Um, pressured to stay at home, but people have lost their jobs, people have lost their businesses, people have died, some people have died from it, uh, about a half a million or almost 600,000 out of 13 million cases that they know of. I want you to keep that in mind. Um, but the world has been turned upside down be behind this health crisis. But this health crisis, as I said, is a harbinger of something greater. Yes, you are hearing the media that is um, pushing people to stay indoors, pe pushing people to stay away from one another. There has been a whole lot of suspicion created uh, about each other, people who won't wear a mask. And it's at the level now of the same vitriol against people who voted for Donald Trump. So as you can see, the powers that be, along with their media puppets, are using these things to create so much suspicion and division that people will easily betray one another as the pressure increase. Now, Revelation 13, 17 says, And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. I am not saying that wearing a face mask is the mark of the beast. What I am saying is the pressure to make you wear a face mask and to make you stay at home, whether even if you're not sick and don't know what anyone who has been sick and you are not showing any signs, all of this is a dress rehearsal to what is coming. And it's not coming far away. It's coming within the next six to 12 months. So I want you to be prepared. You also need to understand that the mark of the beast is not something you will take by accident. You just like the vaccine, the vaccine, they will begin to force this on us and people who refuse to take the vaccine will be uh, prohibited from buying anything in the store because they will say, that we don't know if you're carrying a virus and you could infect other people. I just did the weekend wrap up in which I covered the COVID pass. If you have not watched that video, I will have um, a, a title for that one on the end of this video as well. You need to watch it. If you have never heard of the COVID pass, make sure that you look it up, that you watch my video and then that you look it up because this is how they will be determining who eats and who doesn't. But neither of these things will be the mark of the beast. However, the mark of the beast will be so clear that when, if you decide to take it, understand that there will be no coming back from that. You will have assigned yourself to eternity in hell. So the best thing that you can do for yourself and your family right now is reach for that Bible as dusty as it may be and ask the Lord to help you. As I told you, I have lost my faith and was outside of God's will for many, many years. I don't even know how many years, more than seven could be as much as 10. And this was after having served at a ministry for 14 years. I lost my faith, faith primarily because of the treatment of black people, because of the ongoing oppression and hatred of black people. And I didn't think that God cared. 
And I can tell you even now, almost on a daily basis, I am before him uh, pleading with him for black people, for him to restore us, for him to bring us back to him, for him to help us understand who he is and how he works, for him to uh, help us understand how he has used us in the past. And for him to give us right mindedness and for us to humble ourselves before him so that he will heal us. I'm doing this about just about daily and especially as it has to do with these black males and their waywardness and the disbelief and confusion they have brought into our tribe. But that said, God has been gracious enough to um, to carry me forward. He allowed me to live. And he's opened my eyes in his word. I still have uh, trouble that we are working on day after day is in what I see uh, happening to black people and to that black people do to themselves. But I cannot deny that I would not be making these videos if it wasn't for my absolute belief in his word, even though I don't understand everything. And I would not have known that the food shortages were coming had I not attended that meeting. And then that meeting was uh, confirmed when he turned my attention to some channels on YouTube. YouTube had been around at least 10 years at that point, and I had paid very little attention to it. So I can testify in my own life how he reached out to me. Now he is using this video to reach out to you. The clock is ticking. There is worst on its way, and we will see it by the end of this year. Please don't waste the most valuable resource and commodity that you have, and that is time. Take time to read the Bible. Take time to go before the Lord just as you are today. He doesn't want you to try and fix yourself. He is the only one that can fix you. Bring your anger. Bring your disbelief. Bring your mocking. Bring your... Um, laziness bring your complacency whatever it is bring it to him ask him to help you ask him to help you understand his word ask him to help you uh by sending his spirit ask him to seal you to him so that you cannot fail um confess your sins before him again understand every single word every single thought every single action every single emotion that is contrary to the holiness of God and that sums up pretty much all of our existence we need to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ in order to enter the kingdom of heaven Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life don't waste any more time do it today now for those of you who still remain unconvinced don't waste any more time where you are start to gather that food start to grow that food start to acquire food water medicine look at some of my other videos to get information start setting up networks with like-minded people that you can trust some of these people may not be in your family and start building caches of food and so forth and so on right now if you are a single woman, especially a single woman raising children, and you are in a Chirac or a Blackistan, get out. Use your stimulus check. Use those credit cards. Stop getting your hair done, your nails done, uh, driving that car you can't afford, and get out. Move to a place that is far safer. It will not guarantee you not being disturbed, but it means you have a better chance of working with your neighbors towards everybody's safety and um and uh, security. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of The Blackboard. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Also, take a moment and check out the information located in the description box. There are lots of links and information about other people that I watch who do excellent content to help empower you and educate you so that you wind up on the right side of eternity. We'll see you next time.